Hello, long time no see. Welcome back to my channel. I am Meg and I have just finished my first year of university. It's been a pretty rough ride, but I think I'm pretty much settled in and doing pretty well for myself. I've also just come back from a trip back home to Virginia, so I'm feeling pretty refreshed and ready to make new content for you guys. But enough about me, let's jump straight into the content matter of this video. I have just finished my first year in McGill Computer Science and I have a lot of thoughts. I had no background in computer science before starting college. However, for the time being now, I've developed at minimum a love-hate relationship relationship with McGill Computer Science, so I thought I would reflect on my experience as someone who had no experience in computer science, and maybe you guys can learn a thing or two if you're thinking about picking computer science in college for yourself. Number one, don't be afraid to try it out. I know that is a pretty weird one to start out with, but I wanted to include this one as someone who's always been very averse to STEM. Not that I was bad at STEM, I was a pretty good science and math student, I just never enjoyed it particularly, and I felt like I had always boxed myself into this niche of being a humanities kid. I actually talked about it a little bit in my AP classes ranking. Now, as you can probably assume by now, I'm a big humanities kid. I hate STEM. However, that doesn't make me incapable of picking up coding and I think that sort of mentality just kind of prevented me from trying it out at all. I think I just felt like CS was crazy complicated, which it is, but not impossible. And something that, you know, it was like a calling that you had to have, which I think is a bit of a romanticized notion if you put in enough work you can get into it. I will say though that as someone who came into college with no CS background, most people come in with a lot of experience, so I had to put in way more effort than the average person, but I feel like if it's something that you're willing to put your mind to and put enough time and effort, it's not something that is impossible to pick up within at least a semester or two. That brings me to my next point, which is to practice, 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 and keep up with your assignments. If you're just starting off in CS, then you really gotta prepare to practice your ass off. I feel like the methodologies that I use for my economics classes and my computer science classes have been wildly different. In my experience for my economics classes, I never really had to keep up with classes every single day. If I had an assignment for week three, I just needed to review the week three material and I didn't need to build up from what I was learning from day to day. And that was definitely not the case for computer science. In week one, you might learn how to use a for loop. And in week two, you might learn the definition of an array and you need to combine both of those in order to build your code. You can't really skimp out on a week or so. You have to be present for basically every single class ever, which is horrible for my procrastination and a very tough lesson that I had to learn. Unfortunately, or maybe this is the beauty of computer science, every concept is a piece to a puzzle that you just need to get together and just practice the hell out of. And honestly, I felt like practicing gave me this sort of like muscle memory. Sometimes I'll just be coding now and it just comes out. I have these like blurry ideas of what I'm going to do with my code. So the more you practice, the more you just get used to the rhythm of it and you can just turn your brain off sometimes and just get it all out there. Of course, you're gonna have to go back and debug and all the code that you write on the first try won't be perfect, but it'll make your life so much easier if you really just get into the rhythm of it. Tangentially related, you really, really want to start your programming assignments the moment you get them, like as soon as possible, or else you will be slaving for them for like 72 hours straight before the deadline. And trust me, I have learned that the hard way. I feel like in the past, I've just cracked open Google Docs at like 10.30 and then word vomited all on paper. With coding, obviously it has to be precise language. And so you really want to be able to have that freedom and that time to look back at your code and fix all the problems because most of what you're gonna be spending your time on is not actually coding, it's fixing the code. And oh boy, it just takes forever. And sometimes you just wanna sleep on it and then look at it with a new pair of eyes. So yeah, start it ahead of time, keep on track with your coursework or else it's just gonna snowball into a horrifying monster that you just don't wanna deal with. Number three is that final exams are hell on earth. And I did not realize it until probably when I stepped into the examination room. 
And I don't know if this is a COVID related problem or not, but I just am not good at in-person exams for CS. I've always been good at everything else, you know, the SAT, the APs, but handwriting code after a semester of typing it and over relying on the debugger and honestly Stack Overflow and Reddit and having to actually just handwrite it and just erase everything like every five minutes was such a pain in the ass. So I guess this kind of ties into my previous point of practicing. You know, I did a lot of practice code on my laptop and I typed it all out, but I definitely would have appreciated if I had just did that on paper first because oh boy, writing code on paper is just a totally different beast. I really hope they get rid of it and just let us use an IDE, but it is what it is. So practice all you want on your computer, but also make sure if your finals are on paper, write them on paper too. Okay, next one is I think one of the most important points is that assignments are just impossible without collaboration. And before you go academic dishonesty on me, I mean this in the most genuine, honest way possible. I've never been anyone who enjoys asking for help or enjoys group projects. I've always been that type of person who does everything for everybody else, which is in retrospect kind of eh, and probably ill prepared me for college because a lot of these assignments I just don't think it's possible to do by yourself. And maybe that's because I'm an idiot, but some of the discussion boards made for the McGill classes that I'm in, they have hundreds, if not thousands of posts for like every single assignment. So I really don't think that I'm in the minority here. And I think I'm very lucky to have such a robust system, you know, the discussion boards, the discord, the group chats and TAs and classmates always available, basically always. I remember asking questions at like 11 p.m. and getting an answer seven minutes later. And I'm paying so much for college, I might as well be taking advantage of all these resources that I'm getting. I remember an example in particular, which was my Comp 202 Foundations of Programming, which is basically like an intro to Python class. I had a final project where I had to develop an algorithm and I was just skirting under the amount of tests I needed to pass. And it was just frustrating me to no end. I was just having a really bad time with it, not to mention I was moving and everything. And I had a teammate offer me an ingenious fix, you know, after I had just explained to her like what was the problem, why I was so frustrated and she offered this fix which wasn't even a lot it, might, it must have been like three or four lines out of like 150 but that totally changed the game and we ended up getting second place in our class-wide competition and it's stuff like that where you just need a new pair of eyes sometimes you're so tunnel visioned into this code that you've written that you can't really imagine anything else so use all the help that you can from your professors your TAs your classmates they're there for a reason and it doesn't make you any less of a student student or a programmer or anything if you would like to take that help. If anything, it makes you a much better team player and a much more well-rounded individual. Next is maybe not something I've learned, but just something that I've appreciated about computer science, and that's just the sheer amount of resources available. I'm comparing this directly to my economics experience, which has a lot of niche information, but sometimes I would try to Google a concept if I didn't get it in the textbook or in the lecture, and I'd try to Google it, and there would be essentially nothing on it because it was so niche and it frustrated me to no end because I'd been so used to, you know, looking up videos on, you know, how to self-study an AP, like from channels like mine. And it's fine, but I think it really restricted the points of view or the types of explanations that I was getting and the methods of learning that I was be able to absorb because, you know, everybody's a different type of learner. Some people like to watch videos, some people like to read books, and I did not really like reading like two summarized lines on a PowerPoint slide, but I digress. My point is, is that computer science is just overflowing with information and with resources. You know, there's sites where they'll give you practice prompts. There's a bunch of YouTube channels. There is Stack Overflow, which is um, literally the God's gift to humanity, I want to say. And yeah, there's just so much out there for you to use. And it has been something that has been such a game changer in my CS slash academic career. Next is that learning languages gives you a lot of transferable skills. In my head, I think I always thought they're just separate languages. You know, Java is Java, C is C, Python is Python. While they have a lot of differences in how they tackle their syntax or even how they process the information, I actually took a course called Comp 230, which is logic and computability. It really just broke down some of these concepts to the bone, you know, Boolean logic, you know, we drew truth tables and stuff. 
stuff like that. And I really just got to understand how that kind of functioned across basically the majority of, at least the majority of what I've learned, the majority of the programming languages. In my opinion, it's just so cool. And there's so much transferable skills and knowledge. And I feel like even though each programming language is its own thing and it has its pros and its cons, there's a lot of transferable skills. You know, I started out with Python, which is usually what people start out with, but then I transitioned right to Bash and C, which was kind of a role pain in the ass. But there were a lot of things that I learned from Python that massively helped me so that for my second go around and learning a programming language, I didn't feel like I was starting from scratch, even though Python and C are very different beasts, let me tell you that. Not to get too far ahead of myself before I meet a language that just completely stumps me, but I have been feeling a lot better after knocking my first two languages out of the way. Number seven is to not get too caught up on the competition. And I kind of mentioned this earlier when I said that, you know, McGill can be really rigorous and most people are coming in with tons of programming experience. Trust me, all of my friends are computer science majors and sometimes it can be pretty miserable listening to all the freaking amazing things that they're up to, but that's them and I'm me and we're all on different paths. I guess that is so corny, I hate it. I remember my first week of college at McGill, I remember being so pissed off at these people in my Python class because they were just like, this is so easy. And they literally were revolting for a harder assignment in this intro class, mind you. There are always gonna be people that exist like that and there are gonna be so many people, especially in college, that are just miles ahead of what you do. And I think that's honestly fine. I went to a high school environment that was so competitive and I feel like what I've appreciated about college, whether it be because of the environment or because of my mindset change, I hate saying that again, that sounds kind of pretentious. I just feel like I can disconnect myself from that kind of mentality. Being able to do so helps alleviate a lot of the imposter syndrome. I feel like a lot of my friends in STEM programs and other similarly academically rigorous college's experience just focus on your thing and it's okay if i'm not gonna get like a fang internship anytime soon i just started last year and i think i have done more for myself than i expected myself to back in senior year so don't get caught up with the competition a lot of people are just kind of faking it honestly i don't know why for discord servers but they kind of are so just keep out what you're doing because number eight which is my final point about all of what I've learned in my year of McGill Computer Science is that it will all be worth it once in the end your code runs with no hitches. It is literally like euphoric. A big reason of why I wanted to pick up computer science in college was in order to challenge myself. I felt like it was something that I just was not familiar with. It was very practical, but I also wanted to come into college and get out of college learning a hard skill that could benefit me in the long run. And so while I probably will not be a software engineer anytime soon, I am definitely pretty proud of myself for being able to pick up this new skill and this new discipline of study. And I hope that some of what I've talked about has convinced you to maybe try it out for yourself. You might not have to pick it up as your major or your minor, but maybe try to pick out an intro to Python course at your college if you can, or maybe look up some YouTube videos online. I promise you it's worth a try. And that's coming from someone who hates learning new things. So go about there, my young children, and code away. Let me know in the comments about your experience, you know, whether it be in computer science or whatever program of study that you're in in college, if you just finished your first year, if you are applying soon, or if you just got your applications in, just let me know how it's hanging. I feel like I haven't talked to you guys in a while and I really miss doing all of this. I'm just so excited to be back. So please talk to me. I really genuinely would love to hear from you and I'll see you in the next video.